What's up? Um, Gunner here. Yesterday on my body tubing video, I showed a wedge head fly, articulated wedge head fly that has the body tubing for the articulation just to add some bulk in there. Um, and someone asked if I could show a video of that, so I figured why not. Um, so I'm going to do it. I already tied the back hook up while I was making breakfast. Um, it's just saddles, strung saddles for the tail, about two and a half inches, UV polish nail on the body, and then I have uh, a stack of black marabou on the top and white on the bottom, and then a palmer of natural, so just trying to metal some colors in there, make it look cool, but these are partridge hooks, I think they're the streamer X hooks or something like that, um, the front hooks are 2 watt, just to help keep a nice gap on the body tubing. Actually, I would use it anyway. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I like big gaps. Before we do this, we're gonna bend this hook head. Um, it's not a super steep angle, it's just a little bit. When I'm bending this, I like to put the eye in the pliers and I don't let the eye come out. That way the hook doesn't get bent at a funny angle. Like if it was like this, the hook can rotate, right? I don't know if that's seeable but if you get the eye in there the hook can't rotate so I make sure the eyes in there and then just smoothly and gently and with a little bit of constant pressure you'll feel some heat in the hook if you do it a little too quick and just use the palm of my hand to bend that now ideally as my wife would say who's a civil engineer this is going to get strain hardened so it shouldn't compromise the material at all. Um, in fact, it should make it slightly stronger. But if you uh, do it too much, you'll hurt the uh, you'll hurt the wire. Just do it a wee bit. It's not too severe, right? Throw that in the vise. Um, first thing I'm going to do is a thread dam up here, and this is where I'm going to spin the deer hair collar to force the craft fur back and again these are like mental blocks do not go past this type stuff and it just helps me when I get up to the front of this eye like I'm not putting my articulation wire in the wrong spot or I'm not spinning or uh, reverse tying my craft fur in the location where I'm going to be putting my deer hair collar so be aware of that. I like to put a little thread dam right there. Put your thread base down. I like to do kind of loose, not loose, but uh, kind of wide distance wraps. And I'm trying to make basically as much friction on the hook as I can for this wire to grab onto, right? So these are kind of loose, wide wraps that are like, um, I don't know, they got a little micro pockets for the wire to grab. The wire is Beetalon wire, 49 strand. Um, it's the .024 inch diameter wire. I think it's the biggest one I could find at Michael's, um, which I really like. It's probably the equivalent to 35 pound American fishing wire. It's just nylon coated, stainless steel. The more strands you got, the more flexible it is. The stuff is pretty darn hard to kink, right? Which is ideal. Um, I like a nice, hard kind of firm loop on my articulation kind of like a flyman shank and I think it helps it move quite a bit so that's what I'm looking for if you split your hook into like fourths I'm gonna tie in the bottom eighth and the top eighth I like to tie the bottom in first it's, I don't like to tie uh, I don't like to put the bead on and then put both ends on the hook I don't know I just find it more difficult but I'm going to secure that down good and tight and I don't I don't ever worry about these coming off like the amount of thread you put on this and the super glue we're going to coat it with and it would be pretty hard to pull this out so just threading the bead on there threading it through the hook when you push this back through this bead make sure that there's no twist right when you tie these two wires in, you don't want any twist. Bottom and top, right? Perfectly bottom and top. So what I like to do is I like to catch this, probably three loose wraps so I can still move this wire, and then I'll pull it through 
so that the width of my bead is equal to the width of my loop. I like them to be the same uh, distance. And then I'll take this and I'll wrap it down the hook bend a little ways just to make this bead butt up tight against the hook. And then I'll come back up. And now that's good to go. Wrap the rest of your wire down. Put some good thread turns in before you cut it off so it doesn't loosen up at all. Wire cutters, pliers, whatever you want to do. It's a little too thick for scissors or anything like that. And the, the end of your wire, when you cut it, it will cut your thread. So, perfect example right there. Now I got a little magnet on here, keeps the back hook where it is. I honestly regret <laughs> super gluing that on there. I like to use clips, they, I don't know, they hold it a lot nicer. And if you change your hook sizes or whatever you're doing, it just, the, the clips are more adaptable. So I only got one piece of the quarter inch body tubing left right now, so I gotta make this count. But I'm going to hit this with super glue before I put it on. I've already uh, cut this. It's about an inch and three quarters, and I've already beaded up both ends. You don't got to worry about making sure the beads are kind of loose and spread out because there's nothing we got to turn it over. So it's going to be pretty easy to just fold it over itself. I don't, I've only done this um, with, the, with the body tubing one other time, and it's the wet edge I showed you the other day. Um, so this is not like a proven pattern or anything, I haven't had the time to take this out, which is why I don't sell it or anything, it's just something I experimented with and something that I thought was cool, and it's a cool idea for other people to try and experiment with. So. Just know that, probably after a field season or two, maybe you'll see me do something with it. But until then, it's just a cool idea that I wanted to share, just so you know. And I don't know how smoothly all the marabou stacking is going to go. It's kind of probably going to be a little difficult, but I'll try to do it the best I can in one take on video. That's the idea. Should be able to do it. So I welded that thread on there, got the super glue on there, that's all good to go. So be aware of that. Maybe it would have been nice if I would have burnt it at a kind of a wider angle than what it was. But Alright. I got it to work, no big deal. Tie that in right on top of itself there, throw a half inch on. Right now I'm using my Flymaster Plus. I'll probably switch up to the GSP to do the head. I will switch up to do the head. But for right now I like it. So I didn't mention this last time, but the Flymaster is plastic, right? It's got a lot of stretch into it. So when you're wrapping over itself or you're securing materials and you pull it taut, all that uh, the stretch in the, the stretch in the thread kind of locks itself into place, which is nice. So it can't back out really. Holds half hitches and stuff nicely. So. I like to tie with elastic threads when I'm not spinning anything or stacking. So boom, there you go. I super glued my fingers together. <laughs> so there's the flyman tubing on top of the articulation wire. And it's basically just going to add and flare all of our material that we stack and it's just going to add bulk and create a nice proportion going back down onto the fly. So you know, my trout flies are big. I like to fish five, six inch flies just about always. Smallies eat them, pike eat them, trout eat them. No fear. Go big or go home. Hunting hogs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack 
black marabou on top, white on the bottom. I'm going to palmer a natural. And then we're going to reverse tie craft fur up at the head. Reverse it back with deer hair collar, which is going to be pretty light. I don't want, I'm not looking to do like scalp and pectoral fins or anything. I'm just looking for something to reverse tie that craft fur and get a lot more volume out of it. And then we're going to spin a wedge head on the bent part of the shank. So, you don't have to finish the video now because I told you everything we're going to do. Now we got some nice marabou, dark on top, light on the bottom. Kind of looks a little sloppy, but hey, I'm going to cover it all anyway. So that breeze, baby that breeze. All right. So, good looking. I'm going to hit this with super glue, protect all that thread and protect all that marabou. And I'm going to drink some coffee and make you guys wait. Um, so I like to make it a little bit wider than just a single clump. And you can come in on top and kind of roll it behind the hook. And then a loose wrap, we'll use thread torque to bring it all the way around. And you can just cinch that down. Tie it back a little ways from your uh, thread dam up there so that you still have your whole thread dam right up tight against the craft fur to spin your gear here. And if you wanted to add rubber legs or lateral scales or whatever you want to do, this is when I'd do it. And I'd probably do it on top of the craft fur butts. And what we're going to do is we're just going to super glue the thread and wrap it over top of this stuff, right? And weld it together behind that so that we can switch up to our GSP to spin the bucktail. Not bucktail, deer. Whatever. Get some good super glue in there. Oh, well, that's good to go. None of that's going anywhere. And what you're going to want to do now is just push all this back, right? Catch all this. You can use a clip. And just clip all this backwards. This is going to be very technical. Love the challenge. It's going to be challenging. I tied my craft for or craft for a little bit too far forward, but we're going to make it work because that's what we do. Loading up the GSP for battle. Getting the inner thread dam. Pinching that off. Throwing a half hitch in so we don't got to worry about that. Right, so this is this is exactly what I want, right? I want all that volume out of here. I don't want to just bullet this and tie it in, right? I'm trying to get as much bulk in the front for free as possible. So we're just going to use the deer here to basically stand that up. And I'm just trying to work this back. Make sure that she holds while I spin some deer here. So I got primo strip here. It's pretty long. I'm not going to use the full length because it's very long. I'm cutting off about a full pencil to spin all the way around. I don't want it to be too dense. I'm not trying to create anything other than a little dam here. So grabbing the tips, comb out some under fur. Um, since this is nice quality and it's all the same length, basically you could tie it in. You don't have to stack it if you don't want. That's probably what I'll do. But you could throw it in a deer hair sacker as well. Not a big deal. I'm going to cut my butts to the same length. Right now, if you wanted to spin this, right, so that your thread butts up against your fingers, that'd be smart. But I'm not going to. Slight angle. Catch that. Slight pressure. Flare it. Slight pressure. Flare it. And then on this last one, you're just going to let that spin around. And if that's in the thread dam, you shouldn't have any problem with that running down the front of that hook, right? Because it's at a steep angle right there, right? Now you can go through the butts, catch all that. It's not going anywhere. Wiggle your thread through, wrap down that hook eye, and half hitch it. So that was probably the hardest that's going to get right there. And then you can just take your scissors and clean up anything that didn't rotate all the way around. And we have a beautiful deer hair collar forcing this craft fur backwards, right? You see it's not 
flowing anywhere or anything. It's not doing anything weird now. And then if you want to hurry this process up, I like to trim these pretty tight if you can. Um, instead of stacking a deer hair head and getting it super duper tight, um, which if you epoxy the head, it doesn't really matter what you do. Or you can just spin a very healthy clump, which is probably what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to relax my vise and hold my hook up so that this area is flat. Make it a little bit easier for me to work with while I'm doing my deer hair work. And I got a hook in my finger right now. And then I'm just going to take this clip and try to get some of that deer hair out of the way. But I'm going to put a big old stack and spin it right up top here. Speed this process up. So this is probably going to be two pencils. It's a lot of deer hair. Use a lot. Don't be shy. So we got a big old mess of deer hair, right? Probably wouldn't even fit in my stacker. And we're going to clean out the butts. Don't need that stuff in there. It's all crap. It's all crap. It's just crap. Kind of back the butts up against your hand, right? Reverse stack that if you want, whatever you want to do. Pack it, stack it, smack it. Take this, cut your tips. So I'm working with about a full inch of deer here right now. So I'll have a half inch on either side. It's a pretty big head. Catch it right in the middle with a good loose wrap. Kind of flare it the same way we just did the head. Flare it again. And on this last one, you can just let that hair spin around. Beautiful. Find your eye if you can. Mine's buried a wee a lot. <laughs> but basically just pulling that backwards. You can see I got a little bit of space left on that shank. Maybe I'll spin another one actually. So I'm going to catch this. Try to get three wraps in there if you can and a half inch. That's the goal. Three wraps and a half inch. And not trap any deer hair. It's a challenge. Take a packer. Take your fingers. Take whatever you want. Remember your hook's at an angle, so don't do anything too crazy. And honestly, that should have some deer hair on it. Should have done two and a half pencils. <laughs> so I'm going to take just a little bit more, probably half a pencil, just to finish the tip of this fly off. I am not a deer hair expert, but I'd like to think I'm not shy either. I don't know. I'm not a master. Not even close. But. Basically just did the same thing, took about half a pencil, cleaned it off. We're going to catch our eye. This is going to be very difficult and irritating. Um, so something I saw Andreas Anderson do, and I'm just going to wing it. First time I'm trying this, right? There's a lot of hair here. It's in the way. It's hard to tie on. You can hold your deer hair up top here. Ways on top of the hook shank. And just loosely wrap that, right? and then catch it again and loosely wrap it. Make sure you're getting your bobbin under the fly and then you can bring it down under the hook and then we can flare this. So that actually worked pretty well for me just winging it, right? <laughs> Funny how stuff like that works. Bring your thread through. Do your best to catch that eye without trapping any, any deer hair in there. Push that back a little bit. Perfect! Perfect, perfect, perfect. I love winging it. It's good. Take a bag, if you got a bag. If you don't have a bag, I'm sorry. So, you got a square, put a slit in the square. Put the slit over your eye, right? And back your thread up into the slit. And then you can pull all your deer hair back over your eye. And that'll let you Throw five or six, seven, twenty, whatever you want to do, good wraps on there. 
you can whip finish, you can half hitch. I am messing this up horribly because that's fun for me, apparently. Pinch that off. Peel your bag out of there. And voila. Alright. So we cleaned the desk up so that we can make a bigger mess, basically. Take a oh, watch out. Take a flat, two-edged flat, yeah, take a double-edged razor blade, right? You can get them at Walgreens or any place, Rite Aid. And you're gonna wanna use your hook eye as your guide, right? Because it's bent, so it's different than if you were to just cut flat along the bottom. And we're just gonna do a nice smooth pull straight on the eye. So I, if the eye is flat, right, that's what we're using. Straight down the hook to create our the underside of our wedge right here. And I basically just keep pushing this until I see my collar here. So now we got a nice flat bottom under the eye, right? It's kind of at this weird inverted angle. Then we can come up top, follow the same angle as the eye, push that back up into your collar. I'm gonna slow this angle up a wee bit. I'm going up a little steep. So perfect, right? Now we got top and bottom. You can see the wedge is kind of already forming, right? You got this nice little triangle going up. It's going to push a lot of water. And then you can just kind of come in. Um, it's going to be hard to show, but you're going to come in at basically like a 45 degree angle and just cut it back to the collar. That's all I'm doing. And I like to do very small movements. I've watched a few Pat Cohen videos. I kind of just push it and saw it a little bit. If you have to push or do anything, just switch to a new razor blade. Your razor blade's probably dull or something. This is very easy to cut, and the tighter you pack it, the easier it is to cut. In my experience. All of this is prefaced with in my experience, right? <laughs> so now we got a good 45 degree angle coming off the side of our wedge, and then we just gotta match it. And basically I'm cutting squares, right? I'm cutting square angles and then you come up and you just blend that angle once you get up to your collar. And you get this nice kind of like rounded top head that's going to push and move a lot of water. For very fine work, like when you get up towards the collar, just use the very corner of your razor blade. Very small pulls. Thanks for watching. I'm going to edit this video a little bit so it's not 34 minutes long but um, there you go neutral wedge black on top white on the bottom right it's got that uh, flyman body tubing in it create some artificial bulk that's what we stack the marabou on and you can see when you stack that marabou and just kind of put your thumb on it spreads around that pretty evenly so <laughs> check it out that's a trout slayer right there I'll put some field days on her and maybe in a year or something like that after she slayed a hundred fish or so I'll give her the badge of honor and put her on the website for sale. So let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments or something like that. Two clumps. Spin two clumps. It looks pretty good. That's a pretty nice tight head. It's not gonna be super buoyant or anything. And then for durability just UV cure that or whatever you want to do epoxy. Just a little bit of something something. Looks good. Damn. Damn, I'd eat that. Look at that. Mm. Look at that swim. That's that's swimming. Booyah. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to have to edit this. Anyway, for back hooks, right? I told you what I did for the back hook. You can do whatever you want, right? You can do a woolly bugger. You could do a woolly bugger with a rabbit wing, which is basically a butt monkey. You could do just marabou, like on a pearl necklace. You could do a whole bunch of things. This is just... Hackle, body material, Palmer marabou. It's simple, it's easy, it's quick. You could do, um, like on Andreas Anderson's Sid, 
it's like a rabbit wing with crystal hackle for the body and then he puts a mallard flank over top right for proportion and it gives it a little flutter and a little bit of lift and helps that back hook really articulate a lot it looks sweet um, so just ideas on the back hook do whatever you want doesn't matter and then the front hook have some fun with it reverse tie that craft fur get a lot of bulk in there for free that's free bulk right there it's pretty sweet free bulk <laughs> That's awesome. Damn. I'm going to tie a whole bunch of these.